episode of Two Geeks, Two Beers and a Laptop with me, Tom and Morgan. Hello again. And uh, today we are going to be delving into Thundercats, which I'm not very familiar with. No, so what is what is your kind of experience of, of Thundercats as a, as a child? Uh, purely, I had a toy. I think it was, is it Lion-O? Is that his name? The main guy, yeah. like the big red is that mane of hair, yeah. And it had uh, like a, his, was it staff or his, something? His sword. Yeah. His sword of omens. <laughs> oh, we'll get into that later. So I had it had that, and then yeah. was there something where it, it it was like a it was like a staff, and then it had a little like a mirror type thing, and it was like a hologram on the toy. Oh, I know, I know what you mean. Is that Skeletor or something that had that. Or Maybe Skeletor's well, not in this. Is <laughs> Skeletor, that's He Man. This is uh, how little. This is how badly you need okay. educating well, anyway, on. I had a toy. Guys. And that's literally literally all the knowledge I have. Of all right. Podcast. So much like me with Terra Hawks yeah. in, the, in the previous Passed episode, you need it passed you by, and yeah. you need educating. Yeah. All right. So the the easiest way to explain Thundercats to someone who only has a sort of very basic knowledge of it is it's basically Superman meets Star Wars but with giant human cats. Bloody hell. <laughs> so well the, the the so the the Superman bit comes in because they're uh they're from the planet Thundera, the Thundercats. Right. And then when you start off the show, uh their planet is dying. Okay. It's uh you know, it's exploding, there's uh, volcanoes going off or whatever, so they have to leave their planet. So it starts off and they're all in space on their spaceships and they're all naked. <laughs> what? And, wait, um, wait, wait, wait. Why are they... So who's, all, who's naked? All the Thundercats are naked. Why? <laughs> because, Why does that need to be in part of the plot? <laughs> because, it's not, it's, well, it's because the idea is that their, their planet, before everything went uh, tits up, no, right. no pun intended, yeah. it was a... Um, it was like a paradise or whatever, okay. where they could just walk around uh, with no, you know, completely starkers and they were fine. Uh, and so later on in the show, which I'll get onto, they they obviously end up on Earth, right. which is our, our planet's all hostile, so they need protective clothing. <laughs> but literally, it's very odd. It starts off with everyone, everybody's naked. Okay. Um, but but they're they're sort of smooth down there like an action man, <laughs> so it's, okay. so it's fine. But it's it's a little weird. They're all naked, and the le- the leader of the Thundercats is uh, this guy uh, Jaga. 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 And he's like this old dude. Later on, he, he basically, he, he ends up piloting, uh, the Thundercats craft to Earth. Right. But in the process, it's gonna, they, they find this planet and they're like, oh, this is the only habitable planet in the universe, but it's miles away. It's gonna take us, uh, you know, like 10, 15 years to get there. So you will have to go into stasis for this 10, 15 years. I'm Jaga. I'm gonna pilot the ship. It's always easier to deal with dangers you know and understand. They all go into stasis. Jaga dies on the way there, um, and then he but he comes back as like a, a ghost, right, like, like think, Star Wars, which is yeah. where the Star Wars okay. thing comes in. So think like I, I like to call him an Obi Wanabe. He's like <laughs> he's Obi, he's Barry. Nice. You know, if you, if you, I can show you a picture of Jaga now. Okay. He's very much Obi Wan Kenobi, well, Alec Guinness me, mold or Alec, Ewan McGregor mold. No, very much um, your Alec Guinness crossed with uh, a giant cat. Okay, uh, yeah. <laughs> so here we go. He's kind of. Uh, if you imagine Alec Guinness with oh, Wolver- hell, yeah. with a beard and Wolverine's hairstyle, looks like Ben Kingsley. Actually, it's a little bit of Ben yeah. Kingsley in there. You know, if there was a Thundercats movie, yeah, like that, <laughs> yeah. you'd get Ben yeah. Kingsley on board. Um, so all the Thundercats they they end up on Earth. They crash land on Earth um, because they crash land. Lion O, uh, there's the lead guy Lion O. Right. But when you start off, he's a little kid. Okay. And so they all go into stasis, but his uh, stasis pod leaks or whatever develops uh. a fault. So everyone everyone else is the same age. He's aged. So and does he experience the aging? Well, this is the thing. He's stuck there, going, "This is fucking boring." <laughs> oh my god, this is how long did it take? Are we there yet? How long does it take to get to Earth? No, so he's he doesn't know, he's not aware of this, but there's a his, fault. So his body's aging, but he's exactly right. So this is the thing that a lot of people forget about Thundercats, which is the lead character is basically a ten year old kid in a thirty year old guy's weird. body. Yeah, and also for some reason he's really buff. 
You would, uh, and, yeah. You would think he would waste away and he'd be just, like he'd stand up and just crumble. Yeah. Just be like, leg. I can't move, I've been in this pod for fifteen years. He's not only fine, he's he's incredibly brave. Okay. We should go with you, Lionel. No, Tigra. I have to do this alone. No one can help. There must be something we can do. You can wish me luck. Now, so you've, then you that's the those are our heroes dealt with. You've also got uh the their enemies, which are they were at war. Not Skeletor. Not Skeletor. Okay. <laughs> Skeletor is the main guy in He-Man. Okay. There's, um, they were at war with these mutants. Yeah. This race of mutants from the planet Plundar. Plundar? Pl- Plundar. Uh, right, like, plund- like plunder. Plundy, like plunder. Okay. It's, right. a, it's a pun. Okay. So um, three different breeds of mutants. Um, you've got the Monkeyans. Yeah. You've got the Jackalmen. Yeah. And you've got the Reptilians. Right. Okay. Now the leader, <laughs> the leader of the Monkeyans is called Monkeyan. <laughs> Ah. The leader of the Jackalman handy, is called Jackalman. Oh, okay. Right. The leader of the Reptilians is called Sly. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this is something that's always bugged me about. But why does he get a name? He's getting a little name check. Why, why has Sly got a name? Sly did he demand that. Well, he? Sly is basically the leader of uh, the mutants, right. and he's this like yeah slimy little guy. And he, he he always um, ends questions. He he or, you know, he'll end a sentence with. Yes. <laughs> so he's always like, hand over the sword of omens. Yes. <laughs> A direct hit, Slythe. Super. So Slythe, Slythe is basically their leader. But then they also end up on Earth. Okay. But then the big, big villain... Who's so, uh, uh, is this a, a time where there's humans on Earth? Well, this is what we'll get to. Okay, so cool, right. they crash land on Earth. Yeah. And th- it's called Third Earth. And right. I'm not... I'm Why not to the second one. Well, I'm, I'm assuming, I, like, if, if I may be wrong about this, so, but I'm, I've always assumed when I watched it that there was first Earth, which was presumably, you know, dinosaurs and that. Okay. Then <laughs> second Earth, which is us. Yeah. The human race has by this point died out because it's the far flung future. Okay. And then this is third Earth, which is basically just a bit of a wasteland. Right. The, the mutants crash land in Egypt. Um, I assume it's Egypt because there's pyramids and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> and there they meet, um, uh, Mumra. Who is uh, the big villain of Thundercats? He's basically uh, the reason he's the only guy alive left on Earth is because he's kind of like a demon sorcerer right. who is in league with these ancient spirits of evil, um, and that kind of kept Just him. Looking him, him up now, now I recognise him now. Yeah, yeah. and, and it, it's, it's terrifying. See, this is the secret of looking at him. Mumra's absolutely yeah, terrifying. Yeah, he's not taking any prisoners. No, even like now, he's a little bit unsettling to look at as a kid absolutely terrifying and he was like yeah a demon sorcerer spent most of his time in a kind of coffin that, that preserved him but he could call upon the power of the ancient spirits of evil and become kind of still kind of quite old and decrepit but super buff and then he would and then <laughs> always he would, time to be buff always time to be buff too. and he would become Mumra the ever living that right. was the name of, of kind of the buff version hey, Mumra the ever living can control the thundercat they are mine to command and mine to destroy. So that's those were the basic. That's the basic setup. Every week you've got the Thundercats fighting uh, Mumra and the mutants. Okay. Um, but also they would throw in you know villains of the week sometimes as well. So there were. Um, I remember there were some really cool cyborg pirates <laughs> <laughs> um, that would just turn up, uh, and their leader was called Hammerhand and. Uh, does exactly what it says in the tin. Yeah. He was very much a Ron Seal villain. He had like a, <laughs> a massive uh, metal fist that he would punch people with and had a toy of him. And yeah. that, that was awesome. I bet toys for all of this were incredible. Well, the I, mean, toy- I, I, can, I can't even remember the toy I had, what he looked like, but I remember a, so, a bit lighter. So many of these great 80s cartoons had so many great, yeah. uh, so many great toy ranges. Yeah. Um, and I, they they brought Thundercats back in 2011, mm-hmm. and the reason and they had these grand plans for it. it's going to be this big. They had all the you know typical of these days. You had all the mythology all planned out okay. from the start, and then it ran for like one series and got cancelled okay. because <laughs> well, because it didn't shift toys. Mm. It was and it was so much tied into that this idea that you have yeah. to you have to shift toys to make a cartoon success. And so one of the other um, one off villains uh, on Thundercats who was my favourite all time character is called Safari Joe. Okay. And Safari Joe is basically like a bounty hunter uh, who hunts the Thundercats. So is he a human? He he's, a human. he's a human, well, Safari, he Safari Joe. You know what they say? There's no humans. Every so often people will just turn mm-hmm. up. These these uh, these robot pirates, Safari Joe. I'm just going to play a little <laughs> clip of 
Safari joke because he's great. He hunts down the Thundercats and he has a catchphrase, which is, Safari Joe does it again. <laughs> and he just says that over and over. I got to split a little, little yeah. clip from that episode. Ha! Safari Joe does it again. Ha! Safari Joe does it again. Ha! ha! Safari Joe does it again. Had enough? Run it again. Ha! Safari Joe does it again! Ha! Safari Joe does it again! Safari Joe never misses! You don't stand a chance! See, just, just listening to that sounds very aggressively sexual. <laughs> sounds a bit kind of like, without seeing the context of it, it's like, alright mate. Yeah, maybe right. that, that wasn't a great clip to play just in audio. Sounds terrifying, man. So, Safari Joe was great, and actually on um, on IMDb, they've got obviously the episode listings and yeah. rankings, and Safari Joe is ranked as the second best episode of, of Thundercats ever. Oh, okay. It's so actually, he's only in the one episode? He's only in the one episode. Oh. He's a one-off villain. That's so like, he but, said that many. He said, "Does it again?" About five times in one episode. It's every two minutes oh, if you ever watch the episode. Mate. But come I on. think I think that's my favorite all-time Thundercats episode. It's amazing. But you've got all these different villains that they're fighting. Obviously, every week the Thundercats uh, emerge victorious. Of course. And the main reason for that is because Lino has this thing called uh, the Sword of Omens. Now, this is his main weapon. Right, that's probably the sword I'm remembering. Though. Yeah, this is probably what you had on your okay. toy. And the Sword of Omens, <laughs> the reason no one can defeat it is because the writers just made up the rules. <laughs> and the Sword of Omens did whatever was necessary <laughs> oh. to, to, to defeat the villains. So was it week. like uh, the Deus, oh, Deus Ex Machina? Deus Ex Machina, where yeah. it's, it's the god of yeah. machine. You can literally do anything. So like in the end of... Power Rangers, they just turn into the Brachiosaurus and would win instantly. It's yeah, like, we'll do that at the beginning. Just do there. that at the beginning. So they could have done this with his little... Well, here, here are just a few things that the Sword of Omens could do. Well, obviously it was a sword. He could use yeah. it as a, as a sword. You, you know the, the, the thing where they go, Thunder, Thunder, Thundercats, ho! <laughs> That's when Lino would summon... He'd always wander off because yeah. he was a bit immature. Yeah. He was like a little kid. Years old. Exactly. He would storm off a lot of the time and they'd be like, Ugh. you have to remember that Lionel is only a child inside. <laughs> and so he would go off, storm off a lot of time, get himself into trouble, then call on the other Thundercats. And so the Sword of Omens would uh, project sort of bat signal style okay. the Thundercats logo into the sky. They'd all see it. No Lino was in trouble. They'd come to help him. It also had a thing called, uh, he would say, give me sight beyond sight and he could just see whatever he wanted <laughs> so if he's like where, where are Mumra and the mutants right now it would show him so he, he could always predict their plans so again <laughs> he could hold on to it and it would it would fly he could then he could then fly about with it the sword will not obey you lion O. huh Jaga the sword will never obey in order to destroy wantonly lion O. oh I was just going to have some fun fun the sword will only come to life to combat evil. Do you understand? Well, yes, Jaga. I guess so, but... Jaga? Oh, he's gone. And I have so many questions. In one ep I think it's in the first ever episode, this is a bit, he just stands there, and the Sword of Omens, the blade, extends and chases the mutants. <laughs> and it's like, he's literally just stood there being like, huh, whatever. So I was about to ask, could it just turn into, like, I don't know, just a tank or something? <laughs> well, by the sounds of it, it's, it's one of the few things it couldn't do, but, funny you should say that, because the Thundercats did have a Thunder Tank, which... Panthro, <laughs> who was who was the most badass of the Thundercats, yeah. when they crashed on Earth, he somehow got all the wreckage from their spaceship, turned it into a tank. <laughs> He's like he was the greatest mechanic <laughs> ever <laughs> born because he got like spaceship scrap and somehow turned it in into like, a, in like one night. Yeah, into a tank with like incredible claws and teeth and stuff. It was amazing. Reactor engaged. Traction locked. All go. So these are all the reasons I love Thundercats and more. But I think. One of the reasons that the show is still so popular, so, something you must know about, is the theme tune. Do you know what? Not enough. What do you mean not enough? Well, I, I, not that I could just sing it now, so I think I need to hear it. So I always say, like, my, my general knowledge is pretty terrible. My, for some reason, like, my knowledge of history, my knowledge of geography in particular is pretty shocking. I couldn't name no. capital cities in most countries. No. I can recite the entire Thundercats <laughs> theme tune. Uh, I know all of the words to Defenders of the Earth <laughs> theme <laughs> songs. <laughs> uh, well, let's, let's just have a little, okay. a little burst of the Thundercats theme song, because it is amazing. <laughs> Thundercats are 
So with, with I mean, yeah, I do remember that. Mm. But with the, the style of animation of these, yeah, I always find they're very like we mentioned, Defenders of the Earth and all mm. those kind of ones. Even things like GI Joe and stuff. Are mm. they all the same? Well, they're all Japanese animation. Oh, which is um, a lot. A lot of these shows were animated in Japan okay. G.I. Joe and Transformers I think they were actually the same uh, production company right. but, but I think Thundercats is different but they're all Japanese animation yeah, which is why so they're all a similar style of animation Pacific Animation Corporation there we go yeah. but they have uh, their voice acted in America and actually the first season of Thundercats only had uh, six voice actors uh, so you basically had the people who were voicing uh, the Thundercats and then they would do all the other voices as well like Mumra like Safari Joe they, they did it all The but the weird thing about Thundercats is it's only aired the first series in the UK. I mean, apparently, I've, I've heard, I've been told from various sources that it actually aired um, the later episodes, right. like you know, more 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 recently. But I only ever saw the first uh, series. But as we were talking about in the last episode, when you're a kid, you can watch twelve episodes of something, yeah. and you, it seems like it was on for years. Yeah. Um, was, there was 130 episodes in total. About 130 it. episodes. Yeah. But I'm. Pr- let me just check here. This is when again the laptop comes <laughs> in, a part of this show uh, comes into play. But I'm. I'm pretty sure they only aired uh, the, the the first series, and it wasn't that many episodes. Apparently, it ran from 85 to 89. 85 to 89. Yeah, and as you say, 100. Right. So yeah, only the first season of Thundercats got broadcast in the UK on, upon original transmission. Okay. And so it's 65 episodes that just. Kids never what did, saw. What, did they ever air it, or was it? I, I see. I'm not sure about this because it's, it's kind of beyond. Count. At that point, it's beyond my childhood, and I, and I don't remember. But yeah, it ran for 130 episodes, which is weirdly the exact same number as uh, as He Man <laughs> and the Master of the Universe. But but yeah, so so Thundercats was animated in Japan, um, voice acted in, in the US. But it, I think that was how it was produced. Whereas you get something like uh, another show I know you're not too familiar with, but one of my favourites, which is Ulysses 31. It's bound to be a future episode. We'll, right? we'll do a future, yeah. we'll discuss it at length in a future episode. Yeah. But that show was, I believe, French. Um, okay, <laughs> let me just look this up. It was, I believe it was French, and then like aired in France with French voice acting. Okay. Um, French Japanese. It was a French Japanese co-production. Wow. But then, so then um, they would they would air it in these countries with the original dialogue, then dub it into English. So that, but, but but because the kind of the the, the pattern, the speed didn't quite match. Yeah. It meant that all the characters were talking like this all the time, <laughs> <laughs> and there were just a lot of moments where they were just go, ah, oh, ah, oh, my father, ah, oh, where have you been? Oh, and they would all talk really quickly like this because they have to fit it in. And so, whereas Thundercats was a bit more slick than that because it was intended to right. be yeah produced Fair for enough. American. Um, can we just talk about Snarf? Because I just don't understand how Thundercats <sighs> got away with it. I don't, I don't get... Is he like the Jar Jar Binks of the... Well, this is the thing. So, a lot of these old uh, cartoons, they had your main characters. And the thing is, like, like kids loved Lino. Yeah. Kids loved Panther, kids loved Lino, kids yeah. loved Chitara. They loved all these characters. They For, for some reason, it, was, it seemed to be felt that it was required maybe for the very little maybe. kids you needed a, a comedy sidekick and so He-Man again I'm sure we'll talk about He-Man at length in a future episode yeah. but He-Man had Orko <laughs> who was this little <laughs> shit of a, of, a, of a wizard fucking hell man <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was like quickly He-Man and he, he was just a little uh, yeah well, and, didn't, didn't isn't Batman have like a me Batnip or something Batmite Batmite that's Batmite. It. who was that <laughs> this is I guess this is, well, it's, it clearly infiltrated comics as well because yeah. there was a basically in the in the fifties Batman got really uh, weird and, and camp <laughs> and, and and odd because Batman started out quite grounded he would go mm-hmm. out with a gun shooting people and then gradually they kind of lost it and you'd have things where Batman got possessed by aliens or turned into a giant or or shrunk down to microscopic size <laughs> every week was really odd and so they introduced a whole Batman family where he had a um, a bat he had Batman and Robin yeah. Batwoman. A bat dog, right. a- Ace the Bat Hound. He was called. He was basically just a dog in a Batman mask. And what's Batmite? And Batmite was like a. Oh, he was like a creature from another dimension who wa- who was like, who wanted to be Batman. Join me, Batman, and me, Robin the Boy Wonder, and that girl, and me too, Batmite, in the super new adventures of Batman. So this this thing of like it's the Scrappy Doo syndrome yeah. basically where they infect everything. So Snarf. Little cousin Scampy as well. <laughs> Little cousin Scampy on the, on the, yeah. So um, Snarf was yeah a, an annoying little furball who would follow uh, Lino about getting him into trouble. I saying, just say Snarf, Snarf all the time. Snarf, Snarf. <sighs> which which is why he's called Snarf. Oh okay. Because oh, well, really, that, oh. I, that's not actually his real name. His real name is I 
pretty sure his real name is uh, Norbert. Norbert. Uh, Norbert. Let me check this out. It's not Osbert. Sorry, Osbert. 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 Close. His, his real name is Osbert. That's revealed in. Uh, the episode uh, The Feliner Part 1 I just like the, I just like the idea that Snarf is just mucking about he's like yeah right Osbert I'm not called Osbert anymore it's been Snarf since I was Snarf, five Snarf's like his street name yeah, yeah. oh Snarf just gets better with age <laughs> so yeah so the first um, series of Thundercats in the UK yeah. none of the rest until uh, or at least not until very much later okay. um, but what they did do was they uh, cut together the first few episodes of the second season uh, into like a movie ah. and then they released that on VHS and that was called uh, Thundercats Ho <laughs> <laughs> no jokes <laughs> and uh, and so this was released on VHS and I remember my cousins had that on VHS yeah. and I'd always make excuses to go around to my cousins <laughs> just so I could watch Thundercats Thundercats DVD over there what should we do this time you come around Morgan oh, do you want to watch Thundercats Go Ho again it's really good so we ended up watching Thundercats Ho countless times. I think I wore out their tape in the end. But the, the, the thing was, because, I, you know, in that time you didn't have the internet. You didn't mm. have Wikipedia where you could look up, as we're doing now, how many episodes there were of a show. Mm. So I just assumed that, that was, was the it. end. Yeah. <laughs> because Thundercats Ho, I didn't even... I, for one thing, I thought that was a real movie. Turns out it's just a bunch of episodes yeah. quite quite shoddily edited together. And, um, and it introduces um, a few new Thundercats who, like, join the ranks. And I thought, oh, that's a good ending. They kind of meet some new Thundercats and blah, blah, blah. That's yeah. the end. Turns out there's, yeah, loads more. 65 more episodes, <laughs> which I had no clue about. Yeah, yeah. so it's, yeah, the, the innocence of, uh, of, of childhood. But didn't it get remade at some point? Well, this is what we touched upon earlier. So they did do a animated remake. Right. And, I mean, it, it was kind of, they tried, but in the end, as I say, they had all these grand plans for it. Didn't shift enough toys, yeah. and it just kind of got uh, got axed really quickly. But they, they they did have little references in it to the original. So um, Larry Kenny, the actor who played uh, Lionel in the mm. original, he was the voice of Lionel's dad ah, okay. in the in the remake, and they had little touches like that. Is there like a when they're making a film, or is there still a film? There was. There's always been talk of a film. Does this be an amazing film of all the stuff they remake now? Why don't they just try and? Well, they, they, there's always. Um, I, I know they've had like scripts and development and stuff, and and they've almost got made, and they haven't. Um, and there was talk of making it as live action. Obviously, there was talk of making it as a, a CGI uh, animated movie. Like they did a. Do you remember they did a Teenage Mutant Ninja, Tur- Ninja Turtles mm. a CGI animated movie? Mm-hmm. It was very good, but they were going to do something along those lines. Okay. But the closest thing we've got to an actual Thundercats movie is someone did a fan made trailer on YouTube, right. which is absolutely incredible, and it's got um, it's got uh, Brad Pitt. I think they've used footage from the movie Troy okay. where, um, as, as Lion-O. Yeah. You've got Vin Diesel as Panthro. <laughs> it was created by uh, someone with the charming name Wormy T. Oh, okay. Um, Is he in Blazing Squad? <laughs> <laughs> and th- this was uh, uploaded in December 2008 originally. And it's okay. got 7 million views on YouTube. Obviously. So that, that proves there's, there's an audience for it. So. This is the mystic sword of omens and the source of our powers, the Eye of Thunder. The nobles gathered here, Panthro, Chitara, Tigra, will be teaching the skills you need to rule wisely and well. Thundera is gone, but the code of Thundera will live as long as you, as Lord of the Thundercats, carry it in your heart. spent 10 Galacto years in a suspension capsule. He grew in size, but he did not grow up. I'm not a kid anymore. Can we stand together? Are you with me? And no man forget how menacing we are. We are lions! Thunder! 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 Animal thing. 
Yes. Yeah, yeah, for something that was made in 2008, that was pretty... Uh, Absolutely incredible. Yeah. Proves a Thundercats movie would yeah. be amazing. And also, it's quite clever how it uses you know, movie footage with clips from the original series. Yeah. There's an audio clip there. I was being very vague earlier. I was saying, it took them 10 to 15 years to get to worth 10 Galacto years <laughs> in a space capsule, to be, to be precise. Learn a lot. I feel like I, I've um, talked incessantly yeah. at you at Thundercats for quite enough now. But I think it just sounds like a really kind of um, detailed... For, a, for what is essentially a kid's show... Mm. Um, compared to other ones of its ilk mm. um, there's a lot going on there. it's got quite a detailed yeah. mythology going on there it could easily turn that into some kind of film if it wanted to it might not work as a live action maybe but um... it's strange how it's not been successfully revived really. yeah. the, the 2011 show ran for one season uh, they've never managed to get a film off the ground but it's done very well in uh, I think comics and that kind of thing where I think Marvel and DC have both uh, done comic series about yeah. it and that's obviously you have an opportunity there to deep you know, dig deep into the mythology yeah. and that, that kind of thing well um, that's about it for this episode um, thanks again for joining us uh, we'll be back next time with a new uh, thing we're not quite sure what we'll do yet it will be, <laughs> be some kind of weird tangent I'm sure um, you can follow us on Twitter which is at 2 geekscast and you can go on our website, which is two geeks, two beers dot wordpress dot com. Excellent, we nailed that. Yeah, brilliant. Um, so yeah, <laughs> join us there. And if you've got any suggestions for any any shows or any, it could be anything. That a TV show could be a film, could be franchise, an album, yeah. anything. Anything geeky, anything culty. Yeah. We will be uh, talking about them. Maybe delving into a few of the areas that people aren't so aware yeah. of. That's kind of the point here. And we might not even know much about it. We could learn as we go. That would be good. Yeah, but there you go. Yeah, so thank you for listening. We're going to leave you uh, this episode with something that if you're uh, <laughs> if you're a little bit sensitive, if you don't like bad language, um, you may want to uh, just turn off this podcast right now. These are some absolutely 100% genuine uh, outtakes from the Thundercats uh, voice actors <laughs> recording sessions. Um, and they're, yeah, not, not suitable for children, let's say that way. There's, there's no way these would have made the final cut. So we'll, we'll leave you with these. They're quite fun, but they are quite rude. I should have known the Terrator didn't mean us any harm when the Sword of Omens didn't obey me. And anyway, it was just plain stupid to assume it might be bad. Just what the fuck am I talking about? I want to see your tits, my dear. Motherfucker! You fucking dog, you! Shut the fuck up! Get over here, bitch! Ah, Run out the fucking plank, boys! You gotta snap out of it, Lion O! Call the Thundercats before! Shut up, you fuck! And keep your foot off that blasted Samo flange! What the <laughs> fuck is a Samo flange? <laughs> Samo. I have to do that again! Oh, Lion O! We're not. <laughs> What's the matter, Snarf? You got a cold. <laughs> it's when Wiley Cat and Kid are pretending to be the most helpful that they're dropping their pens on the thing while I'm talking. Let's find the mega condenser. I'm saying that too fast. Let's find the mega condenser. Still going too fast. What's wrong, Lion-O? <laughs> oh, fuck, here it is again. <laughs> what? What's here again? That thing, that, that mega thing. Want me to say it? Yes.